Eunice, what did you make of Liam Neeson's comment? Um, I, I think it was in, in one sense, I think it's good that he said what he thought. And the reason why I think it is good because there does seem to be a sort of what I would call almost collective amnesia about how it is that people of colour kind of came to certain parts of the world. And I think that is really, really important. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, obviously I am African and Scottish. I was born in Scotland and Throughout my life, I've travelled across the world and I've been the victim of various persecution because of the colour of my skin. Now, if I was to think to myself, oh, because this person did this to me and they were white, then that means that I wouldn't be able to talk to or interact with anybody practically in the entire country that I live in. So I think it's absolutely ridiculous that you discriminate or judge anybody based on the colour of their skin. It's probably worth pointing out here that Liam Neeson said when he was asked in an, in an interview on, on American Channel, he said, when, when asked, he said, well, if the person had been white or Irish or Scottish or Lithuanian, uh, it, I would have gone after one of them. I mean, what did you make of that? I think that's pretty ridiculous. I've got to be honest with you. I think there is um, an issue that we, there's, a, there's an elephant in the room, right? And the elephant in the room is the transatlantic slave trade and colonialism, which nobody ever wants to talk about, despite the fact that it's one of the most significant and horrifying points in history, probably in the entire existence of human beings, whereby you had like four, for 400 years, people living in indentured slavery. Like, I don't even know, I can't even imagine what it'd be like to be born into slavery and be tortured on a day-to-day -day basis. When those people who were given freedom or civil rights in the 60s, between sort of 64 to uh, 68, it's very, very recent history. And unfortunately, for some reason, none of those people were ever compensated in any way whatsoever. In fact, what happened was the government, even in the United Kingdom, actually compensated the slave owners as opposed to the people who were enslaved. And the problem with that was that we didn't actually deal with any of the psychological trauma, not just to people of colour, but also to Caucasian and white people who lived through that, who might have participated in it and who might have not actually believed in it. None of that has been discussed. We don't discuss it in our education system. We have things like Black History Month, which are like thrown on at the end, which should be part of our curriculum so that all of us understand this is what happened in history. This is why these people are here. And I really feel that that would reduce the amount of xenophobia. Um, and I just want to say, um, actually, funnily enough, uh, for example, when those payouts were given, um, one of the gentlemen was actually a, a, an MP that I was reading about, um, and there, there's a number of different people. You're talking about figures of like 65 million in today's money. You're talking about figures of like 83 million that were paid out to replace like, say, 15,000 slaves. And what you also have to understand is capitalism as we know it is built on the back of slavery. Because pre-slavery, <laughs> in the 17th century, things like banking really only existed in London. It didn't really exist outside of that. And it was actually invented uh, for merchants and for traders because they needed to borrow to be able to go and exploit human labour. And many of the banks that we use today, whether it's Barclays or it's Lloyd's or it's Chase, they are still benefiting. Many families, whether they like it or not, are living off the proceeds of crime, essentially. So the reason why I mention this is because I don't believe that human beings in their nature are born to be bad people or are born to be horrible people. I think that a lot of the time, the fact that the, the governments and the people that um, control us to a certain extent have chosen to kind of operate this collective amnesia and not educate us properly on what has happened, how it's happened and how it's affected people has actually led to this vilification of people of colour which we still live with till this day. I think Liam Neeson should be uh, 
complimented on what he said, not because it was a racist remark, because it was a live interview and he was trying to show his true emotions. Whether it was, wasn't it not today, whether it was a female that got raped, or wasn't it, whether it was today with blacks, as you say, that it could have been Lithuanians, it could have been Polish people, it could have been anybody, and it was 30 years ago, and the amount of racist stuff that was going about 30 years ago was unbelievable. What he was trying to emphasise, as I could see his emotions were coming through, mm. he was trying to emphasise that all his movies have been about crime and mm. destruction because of his upbringing, because he was brought up in Northern Ireland with all the troubles, and it was this was what he was trying to emphasise. It was not a day with colour or victimisations or anything like that. That's what that man was trying to emphasise, and he's been criticised and condemned for it. No, I totally, I totally agree with what you're saying. I totally think that it was great that he said that because it opens up a dialogue. Like, he's being honest. And the thing about life is if you're not honest, how are we ever going to understand each other? Like, if you go through life and you have a belief system, right, and you don't say it out loud, how are we ever going to be able to converse and understand why we think the way that we think? So, for me, when I meet people, I meet people all the time who are directly racist. I've met people who have told me, I hate black people, to my face. And then, but because they've said it, I've then been able to come to them with another example, or I've been able to start a conversation with them. And you'd be surprised how much human beings, when you have a conversation, a real heartfelt conversation, can actually achieve. In the, in the